the world is not any better or any worse since September 11. It's the same world. The same exact world. The only difference is, now we know what the rest of the world feels like. And I cry when I watch the reports. I cried this morning watching it, seeing the shots of those missing posters. And it's going to make me cry now. We've all lost people in all sorts of ways. I buried a grandmother, a sister, two uncles, an aunt, and my father's best friends in four months when I was 14. Out of the 12 people who graduated with my brother from high school, he's 38, six are dead. Maybe we have different ideas about death. Maybe we have different ideas about tragedy. In the country we do. From culture to culture we do. Where's the world view? Where's the historical view of all this? One death is one death too many for any reason. But every day in this world, every single day of the year, 32,000 people, 32,000 children, die of malnutrition. Every single day. Very, very few in this country. Very few. The poorest among us are wealthy by much of the world's standards. But we get blinded by the 72 kinds of butter on our shelves. We get so wrapped up in our own pain that we forget about other people's pain. We get so motivated by hatred and fear that we forget to get motivated by love and imagination. Instead of bombing people with bullets and gunpowder, let's bomb them with books. Let's bomb them with folk singers, singer-songwriters. Of course, that could be considered as an act of war as well. <laughs> Everything is a story, and everybody has a story. We get so wrapped up in our versions of their lives that we don't listen to them. And oh, we get manipulated. And oh, we let hatred motivate us. I'll end with the example of how this works. The impromptu singing of God Bless America by senators and representatives on the Capitol steps day after it happened. And the journalists and the senators and representatives stressed that it was impromptu. First of all, how many of you know all the verses to God Bless America? <laughs> oh, they were singing verses about God bless banana slugs, <laughs> concrete that I love. Look at the footage, you can get it. There are some very bad teleprompter readers among our senators and representatives. <laughs> Go look, watch their faces and eyes. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside <laughs> and guide her through Third. Why didn't we sing our national anthem? Everybody knows it. It's our national anthem, right? Played it at everything. It's our national anthem. 
Wouldn't that be the natural response? Wouldn't that be the impromptu response? To be patriotic, to sing your national anthem? But then again, if the senators and representatives had impromptu sang the national anthem, they would have to sing the lyrics, bombs bursting in air. Was it beautiful? Yep. Was it touching? Absolutely. Was it patriotic? You bet. Was it a beautiful display of bipartisanship? Yep. Was it completely and totally manufactured and manipulative? Absolutely. Designed to get a specific emotional response from us. And it did. George W's impromptu improvised phone call to Rudy Giuliani. Watch it. He's a really bad teleprompter reader. Perhaps the worst teleprompter reader of all time. He looked like one of those presidents from Disneyland animatronic hall of presidents. <laughs> Was it a necessary phone call? Yep. Did it mean a lot to everybody? Yep. Somebody else to write it? Uh-huh. Somebody like me? Different politics. Listen to the people, stories of the people. Don't listen to Bin Laden. He's a multi-millionaire sociopath who's manipulating underprivileged, insecure, fearful men. Young Does that sound familiar? Most of the Taliban are young males who are war orphans. Think about what they haven't been telling you enough. The US government gave the Taliban $42 million in March. So they stop opium production. Guess who was in charge of the CIA when they first started training Bin Laden? Who was the director of the CIA? Big Bush. Don't let them tell you that shit. And don't let them shut you up. And listen to the stories. You want to help the world? Read the poetry of the people who are bombing. And write poetry for them. Sing songs for them and for us. And listen to everybody. You cannot control how diverse any room is, or any institution, or any policy but you can control how diverse you are in who you love and who you listen to. So tonight, don't go hang out with your mirrors, whether that's physical or ideological. Go find somebody you disagree with, go hang out. In a perfect world, Barney Frank and Jesse Helms are best friends. That's what we should be aiming for. Because we all have beauty in our cultures. All of us. And in the effort to protect ourselves, we just operate with hatred with our ears closed. Listen to other people. Thanks.